So te atahapara means time of the day when all of the insects are rustling and the birds are starting to um, wake up and make their lovely happy sounds. To this pattern, it's what te atahapara is about as well, is that you go up on the different pautama, steps of the pautama, and you move up to different steps until you reach particular skills. Who can use it? Everybody can use it. It's not just for Māori, it's not just for speakers of Māori, it's for everybody who um, participates in the adult literacy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how we developed Te Atahapara because it gives you an idea of um, how to bring cultural context not only in Te Atahapara, but you can bring these into your teaching as well. We knew in the adult assessment tool that the initial option was, was offered that you know, more could be done, particularly as sector feedback came in and we saw broader audiences of learners using it, that more work could be done to engage our learners. And that was the real clear message that came through around what was initially known as a Matoronga Māori uh, until we were gifted or um, we found the name Te Atahapara. And you can see here in terms of surveys, quite clear responses that people were not seeing enough um, sort of te Māori content in terms of the adult assessment options and then passing that feedback through and with engagement with the sector and obviously with, um, you know, support with TEC because this would not have happened without TEC's investment in it. Um, that created the opportunity for us to work as a project team and um, to create Te Atahapara. And so some of the things that people said that they wanted to see in the items were these here, authentic, interesting, relevant to learners in their lives. They would like learning something new. They wanted the text to be shorter, that there were pic pictures of people, pic particularly action photos and not just, you know, still shots with nothing happening in them. Um, that the font was larger, easier to read, and that there were more multiple choice and hotspot questions incorporated. Also that they wanted to see lots of colour in them. And there were a lot of things that we had to consider. One of the big things we thought about, well, what is Māori? Who is Māori? Because Māori isn't just one type of person. You know, if I look at my own family, we're all, we're all different, um, even though we're all brothers and sisters, nieces, nephews. We have speakers of Māori. We have people who can't speak Māori, people who live in France and who aren't connected to the marae. So there were a whole lot of things that we had to consider around Māori, te ao Māori, mātauranga Māori, Kaupapa Māori. And so what we decided in the end was that we wanted to make it so that anybody could come and open up the assessment and they wouldn't need to have any prior knowledge to be able to actually undertake the assessment so that nobody was, um, you know, disadvantaged. yeah, disadvantaged by thinking, oh, I have to know all about this Māori thing to be able to do it. When we put together the, um, the different assessments, we had to consider um, how we were going to do that because, you know, I'm from Te Arawa and Maniapoto and, of course, I might think, well, I'm going to put all of my photos and all of my things in it. So we actually um, thought about the Rohean areas, ages, gender, vocations, rural and urban because, as you will know, um, in the ages, it has to be for everybody because we've got older people, older mature people and youth um, sitting in the assessment. So we wanted to get a mix of that. We came up with these different categories that we always, that we developed all of our assessments around. Arts, oral traditions, people past and present, health and sport, historical, Aotearoa natural world, whānau hapu iwi, current issues and business. And then of course we had to consider the reading progressions and the steps. So we had to get a balance of all of these things across all of the assessments so that they weren't, um, you know, all about this thing here or all at that level there. And I think that's also a really telling point. Te Atahapa is built on the same learning progressions as the adult reading assessment option, as the youth reading assessment option. So really, if you're thinking about um, the use of the assessment tool and what it means for you and what it means for your students, and your learners, is becoming familiar with what options are there and what do you think will best engage the learners that are in front of you, um, be it Te Atahapa, the adult mm -hmm. assessment option right. or the youth assessment mm -hmm. option. Um, so I guess that's, that's one thing we really wanted to make sure people knew, that they're all grounded on the same progressions. Um, so it really is about engagement and what you consider most interesting or appropriate for your, for your students. So we started off by we made sure that 
We included all major iwi groups and that they all weren't all skewed to Te Arawa or Mani or Puto, that it was balanced over all of them. And then we looked at some significant people, Apirana Ngata, Tohu and Te Whiti. There are all items about these people here. Uh, and then we moved into modern day times, Cliff Curtis, Ria Hall. She was a young woman who sung at the opening of the World uh, Rugby Series when it was last held here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So well-known people. Then the guy on the horse, his name's Bradley Lanigan from up north. I rung him up one day and said, would you like to be in an item? You know, just so that there's some normal people in, in, the, um, in the assessment tool. <coughs> And another young woman I interviewed who had just finished her teaching and, you know, she talked about in her, in her little blurb about her, um, the struggles that she went through as a student being a mum, just so people can relate to those kinds of situations. And then we had some lovely little assessments about Nan and Kuro. That's actually my mum and dad up there. They're not in the, the actual um, tool but um, I could, didn't have access to those photos, so I just popped in some photos. These other ones are my mum and dad, Nan and Kuro, and then some lovely little items about um, Fano. That's my Fano down there. And another one about 1814, um, J Geeks, and just a whole lot of other different people. Another thing we looked at was people and places and events. This is the Ratana Band up the top there, and the Ratana Temple down near Whanganui. Kafia Kai Festival, the um, legend of Mowal, the Pakiwaitara about how the Patipaere, he came down from the forest and um, dragged Mowal, Mount Maunganui, down to the sea. Uh, Lake Taupo and how that caldera basin was formed. Up the top there, a, an item that we've got about Iron Māori. Two, that's the whare there in the middle, that's Tūhoi. Um, over in Tuhoi country, and it was their new, perhaps their Fare Pare Mata that they opened a few years ago. And then down the bottom there is a picture of O Tangarei Marae up north, which became the first fibre optic marae in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And they, um, from that, they set up some computer programs. And then these are just some Aotearoa things that we um, added in. There's, there are heaps of them. Tamuko, that's my cousin Henrietta doing the tamuko on her sister, and she does it with the with the tap tap chisels, and that's actually in the tool. Pona uh, bone carvings, ponamu, kamate kamate, ngati to. There's an item on that. Kawa kawa leaves. There's one on that. There's also one on native plants. They want a bread. I took a photo of my one of bread and put the recipe in, and it's one of the items. Cooking um, white bait fritters, recipe for that. Pig hunting, we did that for the boys. And then up on the far side there is matariki. So along with that, we also thought, well, we need to have a variety in the types of items that are in there. So these are some of the things that we did. Blogs, emails, text messages, little stories, reports, fact sheets. And just creating vehicles, you know, in terms of the, the places that people will read and engage in sort of literacy, you know, that balance of online text messages and what have you, mm -hmm. and making it look relevant, because that, that is that challenge, isn't it, that people are sitting in assessment. We want them to be engaged by interesting material, but we want these to look as authentic uh, in terms of representations of other content people will read when they're out in the room, um, whether that's work general life study, what have you. So people always go, oh, how am I going to, how can I put cultural con content into my, um, into my teaching and learning? Well, um, this is just one little thing you might want to do. And I know that everybody teaches different vocational and academic courses. And you might wonder, how can I fit in cultural content? Tent? Well, I think... Um, you just have to figure out how you do that. And, you know, there are lots and lots of ways. You'll have to come to the workshops that we're <coughs> going to run after this. But this is one little activity that I, that I made up um, when I was teaching a couple of years ago. So if in pairs you could um, have a look at this activity. It's got some words missing in it. In pairs, and I want you to just do the first two... 
Are you getting some over there? Have we got any some spare ones? Could we do it in pairs, please? So we have enough. With your buddy. Your lucky day. Fill in the missing words. So that this kind of becomes appropriate oh. rather than something over there. Oh. Mm. I only say it because they tend to use the stars. The whole idea of being assessed initially for celebration, that environment <coughs> practice of this celebration. The next step is, would you go for the next step? Okay, folks, I know you're having great fun, <laughs> but we're going to stop there. We've got three minutes. Did you all look at the top of your page where it says Matariki are growing? Oh, you did. Okay. So up on the whiteboard here, I've got numbers one to ten. What I'd like one person in your pair to do is come up to the whiteboard and write the word. Um, so number one is Matariki are growing. What's the word you put? Celebration. Oh, okay, you understanding. Okay, we've got different words. So that's what this is all about, the different words. So I want one person from each group to come up and stand over here and write your words across the whiteboard. Or, you know, one celebration, tradition, da da da, two, da da da, three, etc. Kumarama? Okay. Now, if you cast your eyes up to the whiteboard here, you will see that we're getting quite a few different words. That's pretty good, isn't it? I'm just going to show you something that you could do with these words. Have you heard of a klein? A klein. Yep, klein. C-L-I-N-E. What's some words that have got Klein in it? Decline. Decline, and that goes incline, incline. incline. recline. recline. <laughs> so this is called a word. On, oh, incline. <laughs> this is called a word Klein. So we're going to look at one of these sets of words. We'll look at these ones here. So a Klein is like, goes, we're going to have a Klein that goes like that. And yeah, it, it can be a potama actually. I like that. I like that better than climb. <laughs> so what you could do with these words is get your students to look at them and see what the difference between the words are and see what the degrees of um, intensity or what's the word when you go less intensity, you know, how they they um, build from one thing and build up and up into something more. So that's one thing that you could do. Um, another thing, what's the other things you could do with them, with the words? Kukufano. Um, uh, Aye. Aye. So looking at all words that have a similar root word or similar family association. That's right. Aye. 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 Anything else? Take a song out of it. That'd be cool. I'll be in that. I'll be in your group. <laughs> yes, you could do that. And like I said before, you know, you might be studying Matariki and um, just because you teach engineering or something else doesn't mean to say that you can't study Matariki, is that you could be using these to help your students to develop their vocabulary and to actually um, help them in their writing.